Okay, folks, I'm back for uh, day two activity here. This will be the second day of distance learning. And so hopefully this will be pretty quick, pretty easy. You will be required to pause this video at some point. So just make sure that you're ready to do that. So here's what I want you to do. The first thing is I want you to make a list. I want you to open up a Google Doc on your own. And then you're going to make a list of all the marine organisms that you can think of. And there's a point to doing this here for a second. You're going to have up to five minutes to go ahead and complete this. So some students are done within a minute. Some students take much more than five minutes, but just take about five minutes. Make a list of all the marine organisms that you can think of. And we're talking marine. We're talking salt water. I'll give you an example of how this might work if we were talking about like a forest. So if I told you to make a list of all the forest organisms that you can think of, if you can only think of like trees, then just write down trees. But if you know of specific trees, you're welcome to write down specific trees. So oak tree, pine tree, maple tree, ash tree, you know, whatever. So as you think of these marine organisms, if you can get specific, great. Your goal is to hopefully get a list as long as you possibly can here. So give yourselves about five minutes. Nobody's going to be timing you. It's just all on your own truth here. Give yourselves about five minutes. Pause the video here. And then go ahead and fill in uh, your list on your own Google Doc. So I'm going to just pause for a second here and let you guys pause. The video will go on here in about five seconds. So give yourself a second to pause this and then go ahead and do what you need to do. Okay, hopefully you can resume the video here in one second. And what's going to end up happening is you've made your list already. And here's what I want you to do next. I want you to cross off or strike through the text on the Google Doc. So I want to see your original video, but I want you to cross off or um, don't delete because I want to see what your original list was. Highlight whatever on your Google Doc, the items on your list that are found in zoos or aquariums. So we're going to get rid of those essentially. We're going to try to get rid of them, but I want to see your original list too. So use your best judgment here. Some organisms may be really rare, like maybe you came up with like something unique or odd and you don't think like a zoo would possibly have this or an aquarium would possibly have this. But if you think that, yeah, a zoo might have this thing or an aquarium, they might actually keep one of those things, then keep it on your list. Do your best to kind of narrow it down. Usually, again, I'm there to kind of walk through the classroom and, and give some guidance and some suggestions. This isn't a real serious thing. This is meant to get us to just be thinking about things. So take a minute to do that and then come back to the video. I'll give you a second to pause this so that you can go ahead and edit your, your list and then come back to the video after that and unpause. So I'll give myself a couple seconds here. Okay. Then what I want you to do is fill out this Google form. Uh, hopefully this gives me the link to the Google form. I'll actually just exit through this thing. But I want you to really think about what this exercise was about. My expectation, and you can, I'll put the link to Google Form because you won't be able to do it through YouTube, obviously. But ultimately, what this is about and what this class is about, most of you have a zoo level exposure, almost like a children's book exposure to marine animals. You've probably listed things down like dolphins and killer whales, and sharks, and you know, great white shark, or sea turtles, or those types of things. But we're missing a, a, a huge amount of variety and diversity in the ocean, and we oversimplify all of the importance of all of it that's out there. So I wondered through that Google form that you guys eventually fill out, how many of you included things like arthropods in your list? My guess is that very few of you ever do. You, you rarely think of shrimp and crustaceans and things along those lines. How many of you thought of octopus or squid? Maybe you do because they're kind of cool animals that get some, you know, media exposure, I guess. But most people don't think about those things. How about cnidarians? How about, do you even know what a cnidarian is? How about corals? How about soft corals? How about different types of worms. These are like flatworms here. Like, did any of you write down a flatworm? There's thousands of species of flatworms, but very few of you know that they even exist. We are going to be spending most of the class in these types of things. Notice that things like 
um, chondrichthian fish. So that would be like your sharks and your rays and your skates. That's that little tiny green slice there. And that ray fin fish, that's like major fish. That's this yellow. So most of you are comfortable with this stuff and some of the mammals that are out there. But we're still talking about just small little slivers of diversity in the ocean. And the rest of it you all miss. Most of you miss a majority of this stuff. So we're going to focus on those leftovers. We're going to focus on those other things that you maybe don't hear a whole lot about or that you'll ever get really a chance to learn about. There's always a Discovery Channel thing or a Nat Geo thing or some little podcast on a really cool critter or organism, but they're usually on things that we already know a lot about, sea turtles and dolphins and whales and things like that. I'm going to try to cater this class towards learning about those little tiny unknown things that really don't get a whole lot of exposure, but are just awesome in their own um, in their own special ways. So that's what this class will be about. Make sure that you go and you fill out that Google form. I will be curious to learn how many of uh, you came up with all kinds of different organisms or how few or limited that you might actually be. Usually when this turns out, when I do this in class, there's, you know, most students only have a couple left on their list and that's okay. Uh, you will submit that list when you're done and then that'll be the first day activity. Now, if I go back to, so that's all you need to do for class for today, basically. When you do your Google form, that'll be your attendance for the day. And then what we're going to be doing here is I'm going to assign this water on earth worksheet for you guys. And again, that's going to be found underneath the assignments folder on Schoology once it's all up and going for you. And it'll look like this, and it's a whole bunch of questions. These questions, you can just Google them. That's fine. And ultimately, one of the main places, one of the main sources that I found this from, I literally Googled, where is the water on Earth? This is a couple of years ago when I put this together, because I really wanted to find out. And then I looked under images, because that really helps me to see it a lot better. So a lot of my questions are off of this image in particular. So it'll be helpful for you when you get down here of all the freshwater on Earth. What percent is frozen in glaciers or ice caps? Those questions down here are typically found in this graphic here. So again, just Google, I'll go back to there, sorry. Where is the water on Earth? And you should be able to fill in most of these answers that get difficult. The rest of these are pretty straightforward and you just Google them and you'll find them. So ultimately, Thanks for your attention today and make sure that you submit that uh, that list and that you work on this list as your homework today, tonight, whenever. And then tomorrow I'll be hosting a live Google Meet and we'll be going over the answers here and what is kind of unique and what's kind of impressive to learn about. Thank you.